like I, I was sitting here with Rainwater and he told me like you should pay NBA young boy half I think he said half a million dollars for an interview. I'm like what uh, what are you possibly talking about? He's like think about all the subscribers you get. Think about how that would help your channel in the long run. I'm like my channel is established enough yeah. for a brand new channel. Should they spend money on on interviews like that? Maybe like to just get this huge look. I could see the argument for people who've been doing it for a long time. This seems kind of silly. Let well, I me mean, look at Bootleg Kev. He had an interview with NBA Youngboy. Mm -hmm. Did his channel really move a lot? I would assume he probably got a bunch of subscribers, but also he's a much smaller channel too, so it's like he has a lot more room to grow. Hard to say. You yeah. know, you'd have to ask him, but I'm thinking it didn't really transform, but I don't think he paid for that interview. No, I don't think so either. So, wow, was NBA Youngboy asking for half a million? or No, that was just like a number, just hypothetically, just a number that he threw yeah. out there. But, I mean... Yeah, <clears throat> the one interesting thing. So, would you take the journey to interview NBA Young Boy at a uh, Grave Digger Mountain? Absolutely. I've seen it not really work out so well for quite a few people, though, because Gillian Walla went there. I don't know if you watched the interview. It was rough. It's like fifteen minutes of vlog footage, and Young Boy's like kind of not talking. It's like a lot of like Gillian Walla talking to him, and then after that, there's like a fifteen minute interview of them sitting down really rough like young boys blatantly f on drugs and Gillian Wallow are blatantly like kind of annoyed by the content that they're getting out of him and it ends up being fi a 15 minute sit down which I'm thinking in my head I'm like these guys did not get on a fucking airplane and fly all the way to Utah to do a 15 minute interview like this is just what they ended up with yeah, and it's then, not up to them though but but then after the fact young boy was tweet, uh, tweeting or put some message out there that was basically like I don't want to be on camera when I'm up. And there was also a, a, a clip that Gilly had where he was basically talking about people being big headed and wanting to change the rules at the last minute and stuff like that, which I totally perceived as being a young boy slight. So my read on it is basically that they went up there thinking they were going to do this great full length interview. He ends up being all fucked up and then his team basically shuts down them putting out anything besides this like quick little 15 minute sit down. I was just like, that's got to be humiliating and slash frustrating as for guys like them who are super yeah. solidified in the industry to be having the artist jerk them around like that. We've all gone through it. I remember my first interview with Lil Wayne was sort of like that. He didn't really want to talk about nothing. He would kind of brush off questions. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it happens, man, especially with a certain level of like celebrity when they have handlers around him and PR people around him. You know, this is why I like to. You know, this is why I've, I've built up my, my crew of, re, you know, repeat guests where it's like, okay, I, I know that we could go where I want to go mm. with, with these interviews. I don't have to sit there and have someone be like, no, don't ask that. You know, oh, no, like we want to see the footage first. We want to, you know, make you jump through a bunch of hoops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you have to do that with certain people, but it's not a lot of fun at the right. end of the day. Definitely, yeah. It's like just dealing with people who want to be treated like prima donnas versus – you having a conversation with Boosie, who's just a grown ass man. And yeah. if he doesn't like something that you ask him, he's probably gonna tell you real quick. Yeah. It's easy to work through. He's just like, people would consider him to be like this egotistical, like crazy no, dude, but the way no, that he the acts with the interviews and stuff is seems very reasonable. No, he's he's professional, you know? And, and I, I try to be the same way. Like if I'm interviewing at a platform, it's like, I am here to do a job. I, I am here to perform. Mm. Uh, I understand that there's cameras and there's money being spent, and uh, you know it, it's a it's a has a real audience associated with it. So I'm going to treat it as so. Mm. It, it's it's a job, and uh, some people don't look at it that way, mm. but you should. I was thinking about just like the shelf life of the content we're creating in general too, because all right, like. There's been many times where I looked at what Ack does of just sitting on stream and dissecting topics. And for sure, he's harnessed a gigantic audience with that. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot of value. But a lot of that content after it's like brief period of time where it's relevant kind of ceases to be all that relevant versus an interview with someone. You know, we both have interviews that we've done that many and Ack does interviews, too. So it's not about that. But yeah. it's like those interviews many years later are still pulling hundreds of thousands or millions of views per year. And yeah. there's, there's something very, very thrilling about creating evergreen, timeless content right. and in particular, because you really don't know, you could guess, but you really don't know what is going to be the stuff that ends up being evergreen while you're doing it. Typically you, you kind of, you kind of know sometimes you kind of know. Uh, like I know, like when I sat down with game for like two and a half hours, 
and me and him go back 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we've never actually, we've done some interviews here and there, but we've never actually sat down and said, okay, we're really gonna get into it for two plus hours. It's like, okay, this is, this is a time capsule. Mm. Like if you wanna hear games, life story, this is the best version of that that exists at this very moment. Mm. You can go and do a documentary afterwards and it could be a hundred times better. But right now in 2024, this is the best, you know, if you want to know about game's whole story, there's no better version than a Vlad TV interview that I did with game. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. 